Um, I want to um, tell a bit about the changes at DG. Um, we thought uh, DG Flugzeugbau was not uh, easy to pronounce in, in English for English pe speaking people or in Sweden. So uh, we, we um, made some changes there. We split up the company uh, last autumn um, and uh, we were already a supplier of Volocopter, also an electric flight uh, air taxi company. Um, they are really growing rapidly. They have uh, over 600 employees at the moment. Um, they are also located in Bruxelles, in Germany. And at the beginning we were only uh, a supplier of the airframe, so all the carbon, everything that's white over there is, uh, is made out of carbon fiber and produced at DG. Um, and they are looking for a, they were looking for a, a approved um, production organization and uh, as we were uh, the logical step they decided to take over the production organization of DG so we split up the company in a production organization and uh, a new company which was called DG Aviation um, I work for DG Aviation now uh, Volocopter owns the production, and the production uh, is also a supplier for DG Aviation. Um, it's a bit complex, but it's yeah for the customer. Uh, there's DG Aviation, who, where you can order the glider, and uh, we plan to to produce gliders for a, a long time still. Um, and DG Aviation has two main. Uh, um, yeah, pillars. It's a uh, approved maintenance organization and also uh, a design organiza organization, and that's my part of the business. Um, and yeah, we will plan to build new gliders for quite a few years, and uh, also we will supply spare parts, uh, which is I think important because it's like almost five thousand uh, gliders flying in this world still uh, of TG and LS. <coughs> So I will start about the, um, yeah, the electric electrification of the DG and LS fleet. Um, I left out the DG 1000 TE, which we developed in 2010. It was actually my first project uh, starting at DG. Um, it was only a prototype with a retractable um, yeah, a turbo engine, so it's not a, a sustainer engine. It could not self-launch, or at least it could, but uh, was not meant to certify as a self-launch one. Um, and at the time, I think we were too early. There were a lot of problems. People had like range anxiety. They didn't. They said, "Yeah, you only have 100 kilometers of range, and uh, if I buy a solo-powered one, I have 300 kilometers of range, and uh, I cannot self-launch. I cannot." They saw all the uh, the cons of the concept and uh, so it was decided to put <coughs> it on, on ice again. We never certified it, we only had one prototype flying and we retrofitted it again to be a, a pure glider. And then there was like a, a pause of um, almost 10 years and then we started with the FAST concept at first in the LS8. So the LS8, it's the, it's the same good old LS8 uh, produced by Roller and Schneider in the, yeah. 90s and beginning of 2000. Uh, we made some improvements, so we made new winglets to it, so it can be competitive again in the, even in, on world gliding championships levels. Um, and we did some minor things like the Mando air extractor on the lower side of the fuselage. We made a new tail wheel to have some aerodynamic uh, improvements, but uh, the basic glider is still there. The, LS designed uh, reinforced LS8. It's important to know. A lot of people ask if they can retrofit the old LS8 with uh, the with FAST system. Uh, you can, but only if you have a T or a B. B. So the B is the turbo prepared with the engine box in it already. Yeah, uh, so we modified also the wheel to the 5 inch instead of the 4 inch wheel some, uh, yeah, to improve safety as well. Um, yeah, the cockpit is the well-known one. 
The NOVA system was introduced by DG as well as a safety feature. So it's, uh, I don't know if people know it, but it's um, an airbag under your bottom. If you have a, a mid-air collision or some emergency, you want to exit your, your glider. All you do is you open the canopy, throw it away, and you pull the NOAA, this uh, NOAA button. You pull this, and the seat belt opens automatically, and the, the pillow blows up. You can just drop out of the glider. Um, you get elevated to the canopy um, edge level, and it's uh, much easier to get out if you're in a, in a spin or something. So that's an uh, important safety feature we put into the LSA as an, as an option. So the FES uh, system, it's uh, yeah, the safe system, I think all of you have seen it at least. Uh, some of you know it better. Um, it was quite uh, difficult to integrate it in the LS8 mm -hmm. without compromising the, the cockpit uh, size. LS8 <coughs> is quite narrow, the cockpit, and also uh, not the longest cockpit, so um, we tried to maintain um, um, the forward pedal uh, position. In the first prototype we could not quite manage it, but we, uh, for the serial production, we put the, the front bulkhead where the motor is attached, put it forward another 30 millimeters. It doesn't sound that quite that much, but it is actually uh, enough to remain the, the old pedal position, <coughs> rudder pedal position. Um, yeah, and, and it's really tight, so working on it is, uh, is difficult because uh, um, you can imagine the, the motor is really inside of the nose. Um, it's, um, yeah, it's a maintenance. It's a con in maintenance, but it's a, a pro in, uh, in usability for the, for the pilot. Um, I think most of you know the, the FES FCU, the FES control unit. On the lower right, you can see it. Um, it's quite intuitive, I would say. It's with a battery, so it's 10 battery sick symbols uh, to show how much range <coughs> you have or how much capacity you have left. <coughs> and it's like every battery symbol is for 10 cents for 10% of the, the total capacity of your battery. We use the 40 amp hour. Um, so it's 14S, 14, 14 um, lithium polymer cocon pouch bags in serial. Uh, and there's two of those in serial, so it's 28 cells in serial. Um, yeah, it's all the standard FES equipment. Um, the, the batteries itself are 32 kilos, so it's 16 kilos per pack. It's you can ha you can lift it, but it's yeah. You you can't walk very far with them. So um, typically we charge them if it's possible. We charge the batteries in the glider. Um, if it's not possible, we we take them out and we can walk anywhere with the two chargers. Um, there have been some safety improvements because there were some incidents with uh, fire in the fast batteries. Um, and for transport out of the out of the aircraft. There's the steel, stainless steel boxes you see below the chargers. You see two of the chargers and two of the stainless steel boxes. Mm -hmm. And if you want to transport the, the fast battery, you put them in the steel box and then you can put them in your car um, and take care that they don't, uh, uh, they cannot move in the corners and stuff. So that's a, it's a safety feature as well because uh, yeah, lithium batteries, especially when they are fully charged, they are um, dangerous to handle. Um, yeah, after the LS8, we, we decided to put the system in the two-seater. <coughs> we were actually the first um, yeah, two-seater to use the same system. Um, we had quite some considerations to make there. Um, and... Um, also, the main consideration was we did not want to use uh, cockpit space. Um, and that's why we decided to use the same engine and also the same propeller size. The downside of that is that you have quite a high RPM. 
So the only way to get more power of this engine is to increase RPM, um, which makes it a bit noisier than it could be. Um, the other option would have been to, to have longer um, propeller blades and a slow moving or more slow moving propeller. But that would mean we, had, we needed to have a bigger engine, which would um, um, get into the, the foot area of the, of the cockpit. On the left side, you see the, the front bulkhead. We um, managed to, to have it at the same position. So the, again, the front pedal, uh, rudder pedal position was maintained. Um, but yeah, the downside is the increased noise. Um, but I think the, it doesn't count because it's not a self-launcher, so full power is not needed um, with the fast system. You also don't have that much of extra um, air drag if you use the engine. If you have the extendable engine, um, you have to have much higher um, energy levels or um, power levels to, have to, to achieve uh, horizontal flight. And with the LS8, you have uh, like 4.8 kilowatt for level flight. Mm -hmm. And with the DG1000, you have uh, around 7.8 kilowatts. Um, I think with the extendable engine, you would need like 12 or, or 50 meters, maybe. Um, so uh, that was one of the reasons we decided to keep the small engine, uh, have it running a bit higher to be able to uh, to have some um, yeah, good climb rate. We wanted to have at least one meter with, with the system as it is at the moment, we can achieve 1.3 meters per second climb rate. Um, the next consideration we had, we had is the, the battery <coughs> development. And here you see the first, uh, the first battery uh, that was designed for the DG1000, which has the lithium polymer pouch back, but Jens already told uh, COCOM uh, changed its uh, yeah, company policy or company strategy. Um, and they decided not to focus anymore on the high power um, systems and more on the high energy systems. So um, they downgraded the cells we, we used to have in these batteries and they were not um, able to provide them for a longer term, uh, so we decided to discontinue it. And the other reason we stopped with it was the, the safety issues, because they used to have the 75 uh, amp hour pouch bags, which are really more than a centimeter thick. It's really, yeah, it's a lot of energy inside, and we had to do some um, thermal runaway tests. Um, EASA asked us to do it. Um, and we could not uh, achieve those tests with the setup we had at the moment. Um, because one cell has so much energy, it will ignite the next cell if, it, if there comes a thermal runaway. You get a, yeah, not an explosion, but a, a really high um, burning uh, issue if you have a safety issue there. <coughs> so we decided to go to uh, um, um, the round cells, the 18650 um, battery type, which is in development at the <laughs> moment with uh, Luca of FES. Um, we're waiting for the prototype to be ready, and it will be the. Oh, I will skip this one. It will be the um, the same battery that's used in the in the Pisistra system. There's a cooperation with them, and. Um, it will be uh, 16S, so it's a bit higher voltage than at the moment, and 30 cells in parallel. So it's two really big packs, uh, which give about 9.5 kilowatt hours. At the moment, we're around four kilowatt hours with the with small battery in the in the LS8. Um, sorry, this one. This is the, the four kilowatt hours in total system uh, energy. And now we have the uh, 9.5, so it's more than double. Um, we also plan to have the DG1000 certified with the LS8 batteries at the moment. So we 
will we want to finish the, the certification so we can continue and then we do a major change um, with the for the bigger battery so it's for us a, a more convenient way forward because also the development of the battery takes a bit longer than we plan to have it disadvantage is that we have 28 kilos of battery pack so it's compared to the 16 kilos uh, the old battery had yeah it's quite quite a lot um, we will it will be designed so you can lift it with two, two people if needed I think I can lift it out of the glider on a on a table or on a trolley but uh, you cannot walk with it or something it's it's uh, too much um, so it, the system is also designed uh, to charge the battery in the in the glider itself um, but of course if needed you can you can take it out <coughs> the nice system about the digital is also that the, the room available is really uh, it's really big so we have basically the the, the engine box available in the back of the glider um, and also the the maximum weight of the fuselage is uh, is really big for the self launcher TG thousand so that we have we can put in if, if needed we could put in one hundred kilos of batteries which we don't of course we have only fifty six um, but we are really flexible with that and it's also um, quite easy to make a an upgrade in the future for the batteries. So on the digital, we also did some. Uh, sorry, we did some upgrades on the on the aerodynamics as well. We made uh, neo winglets for that as well. Um, yeah, they all look the same, but it's really I can assure you, it's really uh, a lot of work every time we make a new series of neo winglets. Um, it's the uh, aerodynamic design by Johannes Dillinger. Here you see a pressure distribution of his uh, um, aerodynamic calculation tool. Um, and then uh, the structural design is done by us internally at DG. And then uh, my part of the job is to do certification and part of the certification is also the, the flight testing. Um, and the most important aspects of that or the most exciting as ex aspects of the flight testing are the spinning and the flutter. I will show you a picture later on. Um, and we achieved certification of the new tips by June this year. Yeah, the, the flight testing is a yeah, more interesting part of my job, I would say. Um, and you also get to fly at conditions you typically don't fly. Here we are in February um, last year, so 2021. We did the neo winglets of the L6. It's uh, yeah, it's the same winglets as the LS8, actually aerodynamically. But because it's a different aircraft type, we had to do the speed test and the flutter test again. And here you see at the back, it's a bit hard to see, but there's a um, a spin parachute attached to the tail, um, and I have a I have a cable to the cockpit, so I can, in, in case of an emergency, I can uh, deploy the, the spin parachute to get out of a flat spin. So that's uh, yeah, the nicer side of the of the job, I would say. And also, I get to see the skies a bit different than on a normal uh, gliding day. I get to see the cumulus from above. <coughs> this was for a spin uh, for. Flutter testing of the of the new winglets. Um, we have to climb to flight level uh, one one zero, and um, yeah, to be able to dive um, to V and E or <coughs> so it's the dive design speed for diving, uh, which is ten percent above V and E. We have to show um, for spinning. We have to show the rear um, CG position and 10 millimeters behind that. So we're really testing the boundaries of the flight envelope here. And yeah, it's it's nothing compared to competition flying, <laughs> which I'd love to do, but it's still uh, it's still a special kind of flying, uh, the testing. So that's uh, about it, the development at DG. It's no complete new uh, <laughs> gliding. <coughs> and new gliders, but we improve and uh, 
do small changes to the to the fleet, like new winglets, new um, power systems, new batteries. But it's not only the winglet; it's the whole wingtip that's new. Yeah, it's yeah. actually yeah. it's from and the uh, parking plane, yeah. so it's the last 1.4 meters of the. Of but the you can put the the new tips on an old. Yes, they are all retrofittable. You yeah. can, it's the same parking position. You just can order the tips and put them yeah. on the. It's much more beautiful now. The DD thousand. <laughs> yes, it, it was one consideration. Yeah. We, <laughs> why we did it. Out of curiosity, how many turns do you spin before? I mean, what is uh, required to start? There, there are some different points in the in the EASA certification specifications. So the the most uh, <coughs> important one is five turns. At five turn spin, and you have to show you can exit it be, uh, below one extra turn. So okay. you have to show <coughs> it. that's the most. Important. But there is a lot of shorter spins where you do one or two <coughs> turns only. Um, so we typically just for the winglets we do um, I think four uh, air toes up to two thousand meters. Um, and we do with water pellets, without water pellets, sometimes also with asymmetric, so one mm -hmm. wing full, one wing empty. Um, it depends a bit on the on the program, but because this also had a, a part of the wing as well, so it's it's a change profile. Um, so we decided to do to the complete program of spinning. With, yeah, with a lot of tests. So that, that's the test that you have uh, one wing fully loaded. Was in a spin test? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> How many did you thousands you face? Have you built so far? Uh, we have built three so far, and we have, I think, like 12 or 15 on order. So it's and then what is the delivery time now? Three years? Or the delivery yeah, time really increased yeah. also because we, um, we had to put production capacity for or Prepare production capacity for helicopter. We have a, a waiting time of five years at the moment. For the digital Yes. Yeah, no, the then is the right thing. Yeah. You order it last year, you will get it in 25. 25. 25. With the big battery. <laughs> so then it's a the bigger button. <coughs> those you have delivered, that is with a small battery. Th those three we are fly we have flying now and mm -hmm. have the small LS8 mm -hmm. battery. Mm -hmm. um, and we will certify them mm -hmm. so they can continue flying and then we do an upgrade to it, uh, a major change um, afterwards, yeah. And the future ones should have the, the big battery. Back to spinning. Yes. <laughs> How is it to spin with asymmetrical wing load, uh, or, or wing, uh, one ballast in one wing and not the other, and in respect to uh, both ways? It's not as bad as you would expect. It's, uh, <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it's actually it's, it's much worse. <laughs> If you put water on it, you yeah. increase your your um, radius of, of gyration, and it's not it, the water itself makes it much worse. But mm -hmm. asymmetric is not. If you have one wing full and one wing empty, it's yes. it's actually better than with two wings full because oh, you, have, okay. you have a yeah. So when I'm spinning, the first thing I should do is to let the water out. <laughs> <laughs> I would uh, try to focus on the <laughs> accident spin. If you accidentally spin, yeah. uh, there's no time for it. And also, it, it flows to the outside, so it, I don't think they will be exiting any water if you open the valve while spinning. I have another question. There is a rumor out in the market that you should also have some maintenance for other manufacturers. Is that something that you? Can come on? That's correct. We we um, um, actually increase the the maintenance organization quite a lot, and we do quite a lot of repaints also for Arcus or I don't know Schneider, um, yeah, other brands, um, and we also do maintenance uh, on the solos and on the on the yeah electric engines and even on the jets at the moment. Yeah, there are still a few of them. But um, we are certified to do the maintenance on that as well. Yeah, that's correct. In the one of the first slides, you show the helicopter and you show uh, the sailplane, whatever it was, LS8. Mm -hmm. What is actually the cost difference in uh, just in percentage? I'm I'm not an expert on the helicopter. Oh, okay. It's uh, it's really a different type of product. Mm -hmm. 
project. Mm -hmm. They want to go to uh, commercial passenger transport, so it's not comparable to our kind of uh, yeah price class, I would say. Um, but I, I cannot say, I cannot name you a price for a helicopter. I just don't know. It. Yeah. Further uh, development areas, uh, what do you see? Uh, so, I, I mean, what I'm thinking of is you, you have improved the windlets. Why not improve the whole profile of the LS8, for instance? Uh, could be a. Or, or have you think well, enough? The way we see it, it's, uh, it's a lot of work. So, it's basically a new, new glider again, um, new um, molds again. And it's not that much improvement. So, we decided against it. Um, also for the for the double seater, um, yeah. Not at the moment. We will do new winglets for the DG three hundred for um, yeah for all their all their gliders. We did it for the LS one already, um, which were at the moment it was uh, competitive in uh, club class. Now the handicaps increased or changed a bit, so we decided <coughs> to do it for LS seven. Um, and now LS, LS4 was successful, and DG300 is also interesting for Club Plus competition, so we <coughs> will start it in the next winter. And how about LS3 for the Club Plus? It's a bit difficult because you don't have, uh, after the aileron stops for the LS3, you have only 2 or 3 centimeters, so you can only make a perpendicular winglet, you don't have um, it's aerodynamically not really sensible to do it, so we decided against LS3. And there are some other companies uh, making LS3 units, so so we decided against. The 18650s are those cylindricals or? Yes. Yeah. It's, it's, Tesla uh, it's, like, or? Um, it's not Tesla, no. but it's. I would say it's the most used uh, form factor for battery cells. Okay. At the back of the day, they were using laptops. Mm. So they're okay. inefficiently uh, called laptop cells as well, but mm. it's uh, a bigger development uh, pushed uh, by automotive. Sure. The the main problem or the main issue with those type type of cells, they're not for high energy, uh, for high sorry, for high power uh, uses. So they're used. Uh, the energy inside is big, but you cannot uh, explore it fast enough. Mm. So you need a, a lot of batteries in parallel, more than you would need um, for the range you want for a certain application. So the battery gets bigger than you would want it due to the um, energy losses if you take more current from it. So that's why we decided to make this 28 kilograms instead of the the previously planned, uh, it was 23 or something, the, the first battery she saw with the pouch bag batteries. Any more questions? Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. And this is for you as a gift. It's a dream. It's the history of gliding in the. I think